Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? It's going to be a, an exciting afternoon. So on behalf of the Librarian of Congress, Carla Hayden, and all my wonderful colleagues, welcome to the Library of Congress. I'm Roswell Encina, the Chief Communications Officer for the Library. So we have a very exciting afternoon in store for all of you. Um, so we're coloring the Library of Congress purple. So, uh, we want to thank and um, welcome all our friends from Sony who are here today for because they're our co-hosts for this very exciting um, event with the stars of Harold and the Purple Crayon, Zachary Levi, and Zoe Deschanel. So, so before we get to Zach and Zoe, um, we, I want to tell you that the Library of Congress is the largest library in the world. We have more than 178 million items. So yes, we are bigger than the British Library. Um, and exactly, so. I, I said that on the 4th of July once and I got a bigger applause, but so. But. So the papers, I mean the, the items that are here at the library, you're probably all thinking they're all historical documents and they're books and they're manuscripts. We're a whole lot more than that. So we have the papers, of course, of presidents like um, Washington and Lincoln and Jefferson and history makers like Rosa Parks and Sigmund Freud and Frederick Douglass and I um, you know for Hamilton fans yes we have Alexander Hamilton's papers um, but we have some fun stuff too um, when Dr. Hayden became librarian of Congress she really wanted to make the library not only accessible but relatable to all Americans so we like to show off some of our fun items like tonight so we have the largest one of the largest collection of comic books so yes for we showed Zach the very first Shazam comic book. We have one of the largest collections of maps, one of, one of the largest collections of Bibles, of um, baseball memorabilia. But part of that collection, of course, is the first edition of Harold and the Purple Crayons and the original drawings for the actual book. So um, we, as a treat for everyone, after t today's event, we invite you to come up to the Whittall Pavilion. It's just right next door. So you guys could see the first edition of Harold and the Purple Crayon and also see the original drawings. So also, um, this is mostly all housekeeping. So um, before you leave, um, we want you to, if you haven't done it yet, write your questions for, um, for Zoe and Zach on a little card that my colleagues from the Library of Congress are handing out, and, um, and, and we'll ask those questions for you. Also, um, if you really love books, the Library of Congress hosts the National Book Festival. That is on Saturday, August 24th. So, um, so yeah, mark your calendars. We're less than a month away. So you can imagine we are ready, <laughs> we are getting ready for it. So if you like historians, we have Doris Kearns Goodwin. If you like novelists, we have James Patterson. Um, but we also, of course, have uh, books for young adults and children. Um, we have Meg Medina. And um, one of our other featured author is a good, um, you know, our guests, our special guest this afternoon no knows very well. We have Max Greenfield from New Girl talking about his new book at the, <laughs> yes, uh, at the book festival. So. Again, we hope you enjoy th the event this afternoon. I know you're not all here to listen to me talk about the library, so let me get to this afternoon. So, um, oh, by the way, um, right, um, right after I introduce our guests, they'll be reading um, a part of the book. Then right after they read parts of the book, we're gonna show clips from the movie. So, um, then right after that, they'll have a conversation we, with Steve Chenaby from Fox 5. So, um, and you get to hear more of what they have to say. Okay, let's get to right to it. You know him, he was a superhero in Shazam. He was Flynn Rider on Tangled. He was even an NFL football star, Kurt Warner. But my favorite um, Zach role is when he played Chuck Bertowski from Chuck. So. And of course, you know her. Um, she was the beautiful Jess Day from New Girl. You fell in love with her in summer, in 500 Days of Summer. And of course, the holidays won't be the same if, you don't, if we don't sing with Jovi with the holiday classic Elf. So please welcome to the Library of Congress and to Washington, D.C., Zachary Levi and Zoe Deschanel. There, Are we there's up three here chairs. We don't know what to do. By ourselves? <laughs> we are. They, do they trust us with the? I mean. I mean, that's a lot to trust us. What with. if we ruin these books? Okay. It's an official book. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. How are we all doing? <laughs> all right. What a crowd! Really what a crowd! <laughs> I know. 
Um, what do we, so wait, okay, hold on. So we're we going to read this book. It's not that long. We're not even reading excerpts. We're reading the whole dang thing. <laughs> I mean, I hope you're okay with that. It's going to be three hours and 46 minutes. Um, we read well, very slowly. We read very slowly. Um, do you want me to hold it so you can read it? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Thank you. Can you see it? So small to you in the back, but you know it already. Okay. And I begin. That wasn't part of the book. Okay. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, uh, not yet, <laughs> Harold um, decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. This is you, so I'll hold it for you. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and then, and, and um, there, there wasn't any moon. And Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, obviously. And he needed something to walk on. This is giving me like big time kindergarten flashbacks right now. Um, he made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. Still me, <laughs> this is great, this is great. Long one. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field. And the moon went with him. It's <laughs> still me. Well, you know, I am Harold, after all. <laughs> the shortcut le led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods. So he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. Still me? Wait. I feel like that was all supposed to be you reading that stuff. Well, maybe it was. It was. <laughs> here, then here. You take... I mean, it fine. No. <laughs> it turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. Oh, oh, thank you. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away, his hand holding the purple crayon. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly, he realized what was happening. Yep, and then I'm going to be Zoe now. Um, but by then, Harold was over his head in an ocean, from a forest to an ocean. He came up thinking fast, and in no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. No, don't do it. You got to do what my grandma did. No. Yeah, that thing, and then you, anybody else have the grandma with the big tongue and the, mm -hmm. Not, not hygienic, anyway. Um, not hygienic. Um, so he quickly set sail. He quickly set sail. And the moon sailed along with him. What a great moon. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of Harold of picnics, and he thought of and the thought of picnics made him hungry, so he laid out a nice simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. What were they? When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Makes sense. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If you went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired, 
and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling into thin air. But luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. And he made a balloon. And he grabbed onto it. Oh, that's the end. <laughs> Cliffhanger. <laughs> Cliff that's not the end of the book, but like, just go home and read the rest. Guys, yeah, we don't want to spoil it for you, but there's more. There's more. So what happens to Harold? So much. We'll to find out. So much. Uh, is that all we're going to? Oh, no, we're, you know what? We're going to see. Cause this is the, but this is the same. I know. We went off the same, script. Right? Yeah, we went off script. No, we didn't go off script. We did. I mean, we did. We just switched. Roles. We went off script in the sense that we used one book instead of two. Uh, well, that was. And cool. I read your lines and you read my lines. Yeah, well, you're a progressive woman. But these are know. the things that happen at the Library of Congress that you can't predict. All right. And enjoy these go. clips. We'll be right back. We'll be back. Hi, folks. How's everybody doing tonight? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I uh, expect it to be a little bit louder when Zach and Zoe come back out here. So it's a, it's a nice warm up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the clips. My name is Steve Shenevy, and I'm the, I'm the host of Good Day DC and Fox 5 Morning. So we had a little chat with Zach and Zoe earlier. We're going to air it tomorrow morning on Fox 5. I hope you all get a chance to watch. That being said, we're going to chat with them in just a few minutes. We got some questions from some of you. We're going to share that as well. I saw the movie. Spoiler alert, it's really good. <laughs> like, it's really good. So I'm glad you had a chance to see a little bit of it here. I'm going to let you know afterward, we'll remind you, and, and you heard earlier from the Library of Congress that there were some great artifacts from the movie and from the author who are here. They're actually right in the next room over here. You can go see them after we're done here, and I encourage you to do so because I went over there earlier and checked it out. It was really, really cool. Some really good stuff here. So that being said, thank you all for coming tonight. It's great to be here. My, as I mentioned, day job, or actually morning job, is on TV. But one of the coolest things that I get to do is to be able to be part of Washington, a part of events like this. Lil Rel Howery, who you just saw in here, who is Moose, he's been on our show a couple of times. Zach and Zoe are now here in Washington. For me to be able to meet really cool people and be in such an iconic venue like the Library of Congress, this is just an amazing opportunity and, and such a great thing. I hope you guys enjoy this evening as well. So that being said, appreciate you being here. Enjoy the conversation. And please, a little bit louder, let's welcome back Zach and Zoe. You stayed. Oh, that's. What if they all stormed wow. out? That would be amazing. You know, I, I did notice earlier, you guys did not need me. You did very well on your own, aside from the reading each other's it minds It was disorganized. Parts. We did need you. <laughs> it was. It was. It was fun. It was it like was patients running the asylum. Sure. But it was good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Entertained. Yeah. We got the some babies were like making noise. In we the got audience. Some, we got some great questions from the audience. I'm oh, going to give you in just a few minutes. But I want to talk first of all. The movie. It's first of all. It's a lot of of a thought, a lot of imagination, a lot of creativity. To me, that sounds like acting. So was this like a dream role uh, for you? And Zach, I'll start with you. Was this like a dream role to be able to like let all that creativity out? Yeah. I mean, listen. I. I it's a dream job. Ever since I was four, I believed I was going to be an actor one day. I just, I, I felt like God told me that when I was a kid, like, that's your, that's your path, kid. And I, and I believed it. And, and I think that imagination and creativity kind of helped me manifest this amazing life that I've been living and that I get to be characters like Harold that come from the pages of something that's so beloved, such a beloved children's book. And that I get to work with incredible talent like Zoe Deschanel, who I was, I was already a fan of. And then she said yes to wanting to be in a movie with me. And that's all pretty dreamy, man. But yes, as Harold, you, you really get to, as an actor, you get to exercise creativity and imagination all the time. Because you get to, you're, and really empathy, too. That's one of the coolest things about being an actor, I think. Because yeah. you, it forces you to have to 
take on this other person or, or creature, depending on what you're playing, and understanding how they think and how they feel. And I think we all ought to do that as much as possible, right? If the more empathy, the more practices and empathy, then we understand our neighbors more. Sometimes we don't agree with our neighbors, but it's best that we understand how they tick and how they move and what they believe in. Zoe, such a great uh, actor. Your resume is just is, is so extensive. You had a challenge in this movie, though, in uh, that your character had to keep his character in line and yeah, under control. How did you it's handle hard. that? I don't know how I did it. That's why I need an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Academy. I, I think that, you know, just going back to the whole imagination and, and the book itself, which, first of all, I understand you... you read this book to your children, right? Oh, yeah. Like, they love that. But it was actually, you know, I mean, there, I think there are a lot of parents in here. It's like you have the books that they want to read that you're like, do we have to read that one again? Um, and then you have the books that you want to read that they're like, do we have to read that one again? Um, and then you have the books that you both want to read. And this was one of those ones. That's why I read it so many times to my kids, just because it's, it's so sweet. And every time you're kind of delighted by the end and all the little, every time Harold, like, is in a bad situation, he draws himself out in a creative way, it's like delightful. I, I just love that about this book and, and that's what I love about the movie. So we have some questions and I, and I have some questions as well about things that you would draw, et cetera, at various points of your life. Um, but on a more practical matter, uh, Zachary, you do have to draw things in this movie like you're actually drawing. Did you work on your Pictionary skills or, or is this something that He's just came naturally to you? <laughs> He's a trained dancer. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, so <laughs> I, I've never really fancied myself an artist. I've never really been, I was always like a performing artist. I was never like a drawing artist. I've always been very critical of myself. You know, I'm sure people can relate. Like it's, the thing doesn't coming together. It's like, oh, I'll scrap it, you know. Um, so the fine motor skills of drawing like that, I've never really felt good about. But what she's kind of joking about is like, it's like choreography. It's like a dance. And it was really fun. Like, it was a really cool, interesting, unique challenge in that, like, they would, oftentimes, we would have, like, a wireframe of the thing that I would draw. Or, like, the thing that, like, the, the, the bicycle, right? So we had, it was the real bike, and it was there. But before it materialized, I had to draw the bike, you know. But so I would look at the bike. I would trace the bike with my arm, and I would kind of remember how far I would move this way and move this way. And then... That would go away, and I would just have to remember, and I would just have to muscle memory through that. Same with the plane, same with all of these various things. And so it was a really cool challenge. I think it's interesting, too, and especially for the kids who are here, right, because you want to exercise your imagination, and, and you want to visualize things. And when you are acting, and, and Zoe, I'll ask you, first of all, if there is something, and if you have... Uh, Maybe you have uh, something where it's not really there, right? And it's animation. They'll draw it later in the film while you're filming this. What are you visualizing? What are you looking at? How do you make it look so real that that object is there when it's really not when you're filming? I mean, I think that's just like that's just like part of like acting technique. You know, I feel like is is that's is imagining things that aren't there. Oh. <laughs> I just think there's just a bit more of that in this film than like other films that there's always like some varying degree of that. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like narrating, like the, the monsters behind you, like run, look, run, ha, ha, you know, that kind of stuff it, it, it is, is part of it. <laughs> It's Act, like acting, silent movie acting. Acting is reacting. It's reacting yes. to things sometimes that aren't there. So you have yeah. to picture how would I, re would I react? And also sometimes you got to imagine things that are there to not be there. Like you're, we're doing a scene and yeah, there's a whole sure. bunch of crew <laughs> all around and cameras and that's lights and all these things. Yeah, that's always how it is. Yeah, yeah. There's always a bunch of stuff we have to. Yeah. So you just got to use your imagination for that too. It's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask, uh, you know, Zoe, for the kids who are here, you've probably heard a million times from your parents, you know, listen to your parents, right? They know best. Uh, they do. They do. They do. Um, your, your family was in this industry, so yeah. you kind of grew up in it. Do you still hear from them? Like, if you're doing a role, are they still have that voice like, Zoe, do this? Or do you hear th that voice from them sometimes? Well, I, I always, I, I definitely, one nice thing is I have, like, good, I mean, like, my sister's an actor, my mom's an actor, my dad is a cinematographer and a director, so I, like, really trust their opinions. If I, you know, we all get together and talk and, like, when somebody weighs in, you know, it's not just like, 
you know, uh, an uninformed opinion. So I, I definitely take a, uh, my family seriously when they, you know, if they have an opinion about something. Um, but, but it's so nice to have that as a resource. I want to ask, uh, before we get to some of the audience questions, uh, obviously the, the movie where Harold is drawing. And sometimes, most of the time, he gets out of trouble. Sometimes he gets into trouble, depending on what he draws. Um, but I, I'm, so, I'm so curious for both of you. If, if you had that magic crayon, not now. I mean, now I think as adults, we might use it differently than, than we did when we were kids. Um, but if, if you were younger, what would you draw? What do you think you would have excited you that you would have, have drawn with that crayon? First. Oh, I go first. Yes. I don't know things that would get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> like, like a jetpack. I mean, who doesn't want a jetpack? Anybody Rocketeer fans? Anyone? Um, you know, like I, I grew up in the '80s, and and like all these great action movies, and also I had all of my GI Joes and He Man and Voltron and Transformers, and I would clearly make them all come to life and have big wars with each other. I don't know. And then my parents would come out and be like, the house is destroyed. I'd be like, I know, because they're alive. <laughs> um, so that that stuff. Yeah. It kind of sounds like a, a sequel, but I don't know what genre that would be. It might be I more don't, terrifying. Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Zoe? Uh, I mean, American Girl stuff. <laughs> I love American Girl stuff. <laughs> I my best Christmas was like the I got the um Samantha's trunk. Okay, Samantha's trunk. <laughs> if you know, you know. I love it. I love that the girls the best one. <laughs> I love that the girls who who were like you got a Samantha trunk when you were a kid, and then you watch Samantha and Sex in the City later on in life. It's Samantha to Samantha. It's just what it is. Not the same Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not the same Samantha. Not but isn't it though? Samantha. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the two of you are so uh, multi-talented on, on screen, on stage as well, and you're both musicians, uh, which is interesting as, as well. There is a scene in the movie, again, not a spoiler, uh, but Zoe, your character is playing piano. Is that you playing in the movie? Um, well, I was playing, but like I think they, like, they put someone like better than me because... Um, I was, pl I learned, I mean, I play piano, but I'm not a classical pianist, and I learned a bunch of classical pieces for this, um, but the piano had no sound, so they had to, like, overdub the piece, so if they'd use, like, it, the sound just sounded like nothing, because they, you know, you have to be able to record sound, like, the, the dialogue over it, so, um, but I learned, like, the, I learned the pieces, which was really hard. <laughs> Classical piano is difficult, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's your fingers on the keyboard, so we'll take it as you it's play, me. right? You get a credit. What I meant to say is it's me. There you go. <laughs> you, you, get a Better. you get a credit for that. Um, you've toured as a musician. You've performed on stage. Have you guys ever performed together? Might it happen sometime? On set. On set. We, yeah, we would sing a lot of songs we together sing, on set. We dance. We did. I brought a big speaker. I bring a big speaker to work and just play music all day long because music makes life better. I'm guys. glad you did just it because I was like, I don't like lugging stuff around, and that just like stops <laughs> me from lugging a speaker around. But I'm glad you did it. I'll do it because I enjoyed it. Thank you. I got like lots of joy out of that. Thank you. That's why I do it. I think it. I think it brings joy. Music brings joy. And there's a lot of downtime when you're making a movie. You yeah. know, you're kind of waiting for the set. We uh, kind of have the same taste in music, too. Like, your playlist yeah. was, like, a lot of, like, my playlist have, like, yeah. a lot of those songs. So yep, yep. That's cool. Yep. So this kids is what you call chemistry, and this is what you want to have a <laughs> successful relationship uh, on screen or off. I want to uh, I want to have a couple questions that uh, some of the folks in the audience and we asked some of the younger members here yes. actually yes. to ask some questions as well to get uh, to get their take on it. Uh, so the first question this is this is book related. This is from Carrie, Colin, Emmy, and Jillian. Thank you guys all for being here tonight. Where are you now? Where are you? Show of hands. In the back there, okay. I see, I see right. it. There you go. Oh, right. hello. In the back. Very cool. Thank you guys for coming today. This is great. Uh, so the question is, my children read the book when they were younger. What was your favorite childhood book? Do you guys remember what Ooh. you enjoyed when you were child, children? Childs, when you were childs? Uh, what, child children's? Um, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> no, I, here's the thing. We ha There were a lot of books that you get read as a kid or the books that you read, but there was one book specifically that has always stood out to me called The Way Things Work. I don't know if anybody else read this book. 
It was like this big illustrated book, and it was like a woolly mammoth that took you through this adventure page by page. Yeah. And it was basically because I was like this, I didn't realize it at the time, but I've just always had this engineer's brain, and I loved knowing how things work. And so every page was like, oh, that's how a plane works, and that's how an elevator works. And I was like, this is fascinating. And it was not one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish material, but it was definitely fascinating and I loved it and I read it all. So I'm going to interject for one second. It clearly this is this is not scripted in any way, but I'm just going to say that was my favorite book when I was young. Stop my it. grandfather gave and now me Now this a is what you call chemistry, guys. <laughs> so And this is what you want. This side of the movie? stage, yeah. We're good there. Uh, what was your favorite book? Zoe, what was yours? Um like as a younger child, I like Good Night Moon, like classic. That was one I remember and the like Maurice Sendak books uh, were all incredible. Um, and then when I was older, I loved like Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and the Roald Dahl books, like The Witches, some really good books. Zach, I, I think I, all of them have to do with the witches, apparently. It says a lot. I'm learning about myself tonight. Yeah, I think she got us on that one, Zach. Uh, maybe I just don't remember the, uh, the the ones when I was younger, and the other ones there. Another question comes to the audience, and it is for this particular book. Uh, did you read it? And I'm not. I hate to put you on the spot, but did you read it as a child? And, and if so, did you enjoy it? And, and Zoe already talked about you, you passing this on to your own kids. Yeah, I, I remember reading it. Like, what, I, you know what? Someone gave it to me for my kids. And I was like, oh, yeah, I vaguely remember this book. But I didn't, it wasn't, like, burned into my mind like some of the other books. But once I read it to my kids, I think that's when I developed a connection to the material. I think it kind of gain it might have gained popularity over time it feels like one of these books that just never goes out of style so for like half a century right i mean yeah, and, and going yeah. strong zach did you after you got the screenplay for the film adaptation of the book did you go back and and, and read the book and did, yeah did it I, hit I, I i did too long but <laughs> he read select parts <laughs> um i had things to do um <laughs> Uh, no, I did. I, I don't really remember it uh, when I was a kid. I, I, uh, again, I was probably reading The Way Things Work or something like that. But, um, but after I got the offer for the job and I read the script and I was like, well, I should go and, you know, refresh myself on the source material. Um, and it really is just a, it's an incredible little book. I mean, it's uh, as we as we illustrated, you know, d moments ago, there's something that's so simple and pure and profound about the journey that Harold and his little footy pajamas takes, you know, and his creativity and imagination and and the oh, I've just literally drawn myself into peril and now I'm going to draw myself out of it and believing in himself along the way, you know, all of that stuff. Another great audience question, and, and this kind of parallels when I was asking you what you would draw with a purple crayon. Uh, even if it's not a purple crayon, you guys are both very creative people. Uh, the question is, what did you like to draw as a kid? Were you, did you have any favorite things you would go back to, whether it's superheroes or dolls or something completely different? I drew a lot of faces. Like, I like drawing, but I, I was better, I like, I, I would love to draw, um, and growing up, I always liked to draw, like, ladies' faces with, m you know, makeup on and stuff. It was fun. <laughs> How about you? Uh, oh, uh, trees. I like to draw trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apples. Eyes. <laughs> okay, you go. <laughs> All of the I drew ladies' faces. <laughs> and ladies' faces. Um, apples, eyes. No, I, di I didn't because, I, I like I said, I, I, I wasn't good or I didn't feel good at, at drawing. And but but let let me say this for everybody here right now, uh, and I'm sure you hopefully already do this with your kids. But I I wish that I my parents would have sensed the self criticism in me and encouraged me through it because I think that it it stopped me. It stopped me from you know from being able to to just say it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I think that unfortunately I grew up in a scenario in my household that it was very high levels of perfectionisms and things like that that have carried with me even as an adult now and and those things can rob you of your joy and they can rob you of your ability to just uh, to delight in the practice and the exercise of creating you know so i didn't draw a lot but when i did it was ladies faces I mean, it's, obviously it's <laughs> ladies faces. and apple trees <laughs> and, and apple and the apple trees you know exactly i mean you, you bring up a great point and i think for the for the kids who are here um 
to be able to, to, to be in this magical world as a child where you, you have this boundless creativity and energy, what advice do you have for that and to, to be able to see that through and, and continue, uh, you know, to be able to express that and, and to be able to feel that you can continue to express that creativity? L love yourself. Love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. The more you can instill that, yes, absolutely. But uh, not in a narcissistic way. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Well, listen, it's not, it's, it's, it's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking, uh, what is it again? <laughs> there's, a, there's a quote in there. Um, it, to love yourself means to... I know, I'm just fully, kidding. Yeah, okay. Just I embrace who you are entirely and know that it does, things don't have to be perfect and, and you don't have to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. And except I think me, but Except for you. <laughs> and, and I think that it's important that, that we as adults, that we learn how to love ourselves so that we are much better equipped to be an example to our children, how they can do the same thing. Actually, I this is funny. My seven-year-old son was like in a play and he refused to do one song because it had the word perfect in it. He doesn't believe in perfection. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cute. I was like, no, 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 it's just a play. And he was like, but I don't believe in perfection. I'm like, but like, it could be like subjective. Like you're perfect to me. He's like, it's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Here's a question He's for running you. for president. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> he's going to be the youngest president ever. Uh, here's a question for you, and this is a chance for you, uh, for both of you to get your uh, producer hat on. If you were to turn a different childhood book into a movie adaptation, Ooh. what would you choose? How things work? The way things work. The way things work. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do it. There I was a cartoon. I don't know if anybody remembers that. There was a cartoon for a little while of the way things work, but it wasn't that great. But I would do a movie of that. That would be fun. You could, you could direct it. I could. I could direct, direct it. it. Would you be in it? Star in it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Can you. I play the woolly mammoth? You could be the woolly mammoth. <laughs> okay, I'm in. What book would we you do? We did it. We did it. Hand did it. shook on it. There you go. What, um, what would you do? Gosh. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Um, like, I feel like all the ones I like have been made into movies um, that I liked as a kid. Well, the man you, you, says, you, I don't know. <laughs> you didn't have to like it. It could just be a children's book. Just a, any children's book that you think would make a good movie. Did you ever read, was it Hooper Humperdinck? Pitch me, what pitch me. There's, um. There was this really <laughs> interesting book. I think it was called Hooper Humperdinck, and it was all about like this, there was this big party that were going. It was going on, and, and Hooper Humperdinck wasn't invited, but he was. And at the end of the book, he realizes he was invited with everybody else, and it's like about oh, that's really including sweet. him. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. well, there you go. You guys have your I next like project. That. We're I don't doing know, it might have been a Dr. Seuss book. I don't. I can't. My brain's drawing a blank, but I know I have like a yeah. thousand that I. That might work better than the way things work. I'm just saying it on might. the big screen. It, it might. might. It might yeah. be a little better. All right, this is a question, uh, Zachary. This is for you. This is uh, from this. Joey is not here because Joey is in Laredo, Texas. But Joey sent this question through Joey's uh, sister who works here at the Library of Congress, okay? That's too much Is Joey's sister here right now? <laughs> Hi, Joey's sister. So this is Hi. Joey's sister asking the question for Joey. Now, th this is from a previous role of, uh, that you played, Zachary. This is a question. In your role for Shazam, what was your mental preparation to play a superhero? How did you get prepared? Well, I mean, I just kind of lived it. Um, <laughs> I, no, you know, well, listen, um, I, that role, man, I loved playing that role so much because Billy Batson is this, I mean, orphan, basically foster kid who is looking for a family and, um, but also has this really pure heart and he's chosen because of his pure heart. And, and uh, to be able to go back, when I was a kid, I loved the movie Big with Tom Hanks and I loved the movie, well, Superman with Christopher Reeves. And I, of course, as a comic book, nerd for years and years always wanted to be a superhero my own superhero uh and um and then i got to be a superhero that i think is kind of cooler than all of them because he has the purity and like the innocence of like a peter parker spider-man but um but he really is like it was a combination of of getting to do that tom hanks big thing which was just so much fun because as an adult you don't get to get to be a kid anymore. Certainly you don't get paid for it. And I got to get paid to be a kid that had electricity coming out of his fingers. And that was a lot of fun. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Do you have a favorite comic book? A favorite what? Comic book? A favorite character? A favorite comic When you were growing up? Uh, I don't know. I was, you know, honestly, I was super into all of the, um, 
like the mutants in the Marvel world, like all of the X-Men and X-Factor and X-Force and New Mutants and all that kind of stuff. I think probably because of all of the superheroes, mm, the mutants, it, they were all like a regular human and then like something happened and like a chromosome shifted and then they got a superpower and I was always like, that could maybe happen. <laughs> I don't know how many gamma rays I'm going to run into, but maybe I've got a mutated DNA, and I'll wake up and I can shoot fire. Hold um, so, yeah. <laughs> Hold you always up. find some, like, radioactive trash or something. I've been looking. You never yeah. know. Speaking of looking, and speaking of comic books, I know you guys had a, a opportunity to, to look around here at the Library of Congress a little bit. Did you see anything you liked? So many things. So many things. I mean, I did. We did get to see. They had some. They they were very cool, and they pulled out some old school uh, Shazam and Captain Marvel because his name is Captain Marvel. It's a long story, but anyway, they had those back there. So you should definitely go check those out. But they had they had like like Sondheim, Rogers and Hammerstein. And yeah, Sondheim. all this stuff. Rogers like Hammerstein's like yeah. writing. I yeah. mean, there was it was really. What cool. was the name? Um, uh, Jonathan uh, Larson's no, paper. Yeah, no, 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 but 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 from um, a lot of musical theater. From from so. from 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 Sound of Music. It, uh, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, the oh, song. Raindrop. Oh, 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 yeah, oh. My favorite things was something else. It was originally called like. Nice things or something. Good things. Good the thing. good things. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> here doesn't, doesn't have the same it ring. Didn't does it didn't have the same ring. No. And the um, lyrics are all different. Like you can see the original lyrics. Like it that was stuff's pretty amazing. Fun. Yeah. Like there's so many that I actually came here about. Uh, nine months ago and got a tour and I got to see so many incredible things and every time I come here I'm blown away um, libraries were like my favorite place growing up and this is like the ultimate library um, and not it's not just about the books which like I love the books but just the the objects and these treasures they have here are absolutely incredible i want to ask one more question from uh from the audience and uh, i'm, I'm going to ask it to both of you but so i'll give you first crack at this one uh and i'm going to start with the ps you know there's a ps on there it's very nice of you to put the ps on there uh, we'll start with that because the ps is flynn rider and jess are two of my favorite characters of all time I okay love that. you have excellent that. taste as they should be as they should be now the question, I don't know if this will get you in trouble or not, because Ooh. the question is, and it's a multi-part question, but we'll go part by part. Did you keep anything from this set? Did you keep anything from this set? And I'm just going to add, or have you kept anything from other sets you've worked on? Um, I didn't keep anything from this set. Like, it wasn't offered to me. Um, I was given the chance to take a few things from the new girl set. Um, and we all did. They said, like, is there anything you want to keep? And so I kept, like, there was, like, a, a watermelon on my wall and a, like, a, a print of a, um, like, a botanical print that was on my wall, like, Jess's wall. So I took those. And I also took this little weird thing that we'd always notice. Um, it was, like, a, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, but we'd all, like, laugh about it. It's, like, a vest you'd put on to teach children about like the systems of the body with like it has like a heart and like intestines and stuff that like 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 velcro on but i kind of let my kids like play with it and it, i don't know where the parts are they just like took them off and stuff so unfortunately it was somewhat destroyed but um yeah have you caught have you kept anything from yeah. sets? yeah i've kept some things from sets i, I mainly i keep things from sets because i I hope, like, oftentimes we'll be asked to donate things, you know, like, right. so, do you have anything, whether yeah, it's a poster really or a prop that. or yeah. whatever, yeah. so I always try to hold on to things that maybe, you know, years down the road I can, you know, sign that and put it up for auction, but um, what did I keep from the set of Tangled? Um, <laughs> um, well, actually, you know what I did get? Uh, Glenn Keane, who's a very famous Disney artist who was uh, responsible for also, like, uh, you know, cre uh, being helped to create uh, a lot of the animation in Tangled. He made me a one-of-a-kind uh, Flynn Rider print, which was very cool. That's um, cool. <clears throat> but then, I don't know, from the set of Chuck, I had... Um, in Chuck's apartment, there was a tobacco Indian, and I, uh, he's, he's, I have him at my house. <laughs> um, and I had this red phone that was always on the the desk like at work that was p prominent right there in the middle of it and it looked like it's like the emergency phone and we never used it it was like the red herring it was like there on the desk and nobody ever called it and i was like i gotta have that i just in case you know i need a landline uh, at some point <laughs> um i don't know other random things like that yeah, yeah, a, yeah. Few, a few things here and there yeah 
All right, one other question for you since, uh, since we were talking about some other projects that you've, that you've worked on. Uh, and when you mentioned Chuck, and obviously this is DC, and we feel like everything has some tie into DC, whether it's CIA related or not. Does anybody ever, and if they do, confuse you with a character that you played, like they think that you're actually that person or you have those powers or that personality more so than any other character that you've played? I mean, honestly, most of the time people just confuse me with John Krasinski. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and I'll take it. Very talented, successful man. Um, no, I don't know. I mean, listen, the, uh, of all the characters that I played, Chuck, was, I, that was me. I mean, I wasn't acting. I just literally showed up for work. Um, but no, I don't know that anybody, nobody ever really confuses me with the character. Some people don't, don't know who I am. They just know, like, they'll, they, they're like, oh, I think that, that guy's famous. And then they'll be like, hey, guy. And I'll be like, hey. And then <laughs> that'll be it. Um, <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> yeah. What about you? A lot of people think they know, like, know me. They're like, I know you. And I'm like, oh, do you do? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, um, uh, did we go to high school together? I'm like, no. <laughs> but I let them believe. And, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, and <laughs> I, that, that's the end of my story. <laughs> do you, I guess to follow up on that briefly, I mean, we won't go too deep on this, but when you play a character for a long time, and, you, and I'm talking about like on TV, season after season after season, do you become more like that character or does that character become more like you? Ooh, good question. I do think what, what happens is, um, whereas like you get a pilot script and it's kind of written, like the, there's a character that's written and then you kind of work really hard to like figure out how to play that character, over the years, the writers start really getting to know your rhythms, your voice, like h what you do best, and then writing for you. So it's not that it the character becomes you, it's that the, the, the writers and the actors like just become more in sync and that, you know, they start really just writing to your strengths and it's, it's a really amazing thing to have that, you know. That's fantastic. Uh, one more question. This is uh, from Steve at Fox 5. Uh, true or false, Zoe, Elf is the greatest Christmas movie of all time. I... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of great Christmas movies, and I'm not the person to ask because I've only seen it once, so... <laughs> Is that right? I don't that like true? watch myself. This is like I saw some clips of this movie backstage, and it was the first time I, I, I just don't sit around like watching myself. It, it's it seems like I love myself though. <laughs> <laughs> it it seems like it it does fall sometimes with actors into different camps. Some people will watch the work over and over, and some people yeah. you 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 put in the hard work, you you right. see it to fruition, and when it's done. Oh yeah, done. nobody's. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's true. You don't know what people are. Uh, you don't know, no, right? Do you like, do you watch your uh, your movies, Zach, or your shows after the fact? Well, when I well, like on a Friday night, do you just binge yourself <laughs> over and over and over again? <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna do a Chuck binge. Um, well, listen, when when we were doing Chuck uh, back in the day, I watched. I started watching everything in the first season, and then I but I was so critical of myself that I. Mostly of my posture, I would just look at myself. It's like, what are you doing? Just get your. What are you doing? Just get your. Um, but so, but that, th there were just so many episodes uh, that I was like, I can't. Like, so I didn't watch. I only probably watched like the first season, first one and a half seasons of that. So I didn't watch the rest of that. But then, when it comes to the films that I've done, um, I don't know. There, I agree with Zoe that it's awkward. It's like it's not something that you really thoroughly enjoy doing. I, everything, every time I watch, I'm I'm still kind of like posture. Um, but but because we got to go and promote and do yeah, and course. whatever, I there's a part of me that's like I just want to know exactly what I'm working with, so I know how to talk about that, and that's why I'll end up. Sure, watching. but you'll watch all of Zoe's work. I watch all of Zoe's work. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> we are uh, unfortunately we're quickly running out of time, uh, but before we do, and listen, I appreciate again all of the uh, the youngsters who are here today. Any final messages for them? I mean, we're learning a lot through you, obviously, when it comes to not just what goes into putting a, a movie like this together, but also how you guys have also continued to evolve personally and continue to learn and knowing that it's okay to make mistakes and, and you know, it's okay to, to, to pivot and change course at different points in your life and career. Any parting thoughts you want to leave with the, the folks who are here today? I do have something to say. Kids, 
you are you are at your most creative now. Try to hold on to as much creativity as you can. Know that all the grown-ups in your life are probably in awe of your creativity. Like, just do as much like creating, imagining as possible. Like, it will only lead you in good directions. Yes, yes. <laughs> and <clears throat> um, stay off of social media. Um, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely stay off of social gonna media. That's going to rot your brain. Um, also, distract you from doing stuff that's worthwhile. That's right. Um, and, and you know, yeah, I mean, like I said before, I mean, you know, to, to love yourself, believe in yourself. Um, there are so many voices and so many opinions and so many people that are struggling in their own life and they want to tear you down throughout your life and bullies that you might deal with at school or social pressers that you might deal with at school. I remember being very insecure as a kid and I just, I, I felt like I needed the approval of the cool kids or whatever. Guys, it's a lie. Don't you, do, please, whatever you do, don't waste your time seeking the approval of whoever you think are the cool kids at school because they're, they're not. They're peaking now. They're, they are. Means they're and, not peaking later. And, and <laughs> really, in that whole school ecosystem, that whole thing that you, I know right now, think is like, oh, this is everything. It's my whole world. It's a bubble, and it bursts, and then you go into the rest of the world, and you're like, why did I care so much what all those people thought? So don't do that. Care about what you care about. Go be creative, or, 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 or and or you know, go be athletic. Go do do go do something what that, you that lights up your soul. And don't listen to everybody else that wants to squash that stuff. And stay off of social media. And uh, listen to your but parents. Follow me on Instagram. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and listen to your parents. They know a little bit more than you most of the time. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, a couple of announcements real quick. First of all, as soon as we're done, as we mentioned before, if you go, uh, you kind of go up and around to the left, right in the room, to our left here is where you'll see the, a, a first edition copy of the original book, which is just unbelievable that they have it here, and the original artwork for the cover, so you'll see some of those drawings. There are actually 10 books in the series. They have a lot of that right next door you can check out and some other things. You'll learn more about the author, all that good stuff. Uh, so we invite you to do that. As soon as we're done here, you can just walk right next door. You you can check it out at your own pace and leisure. There's some folks over there. If you have questions, they'll answer all your questions for you. Uh, and you'll learn a lot more. You'll leave with more information than you came with. So that is, is a great thing. Second of all, and most importantly, go see the movie. It is out this weekend. You are going to absolutely love it. These guys put so much hard work into it. It is phenomenal. Like I said, I saw it. I loved it. I don't even have kids, and I love the movie. So it's good for everybody. Go out and enjoy it. Check out for an hour and a half and have an amazing time. And most importantly, please give a huge round of applause and make their visit Washington DC. Thanks everybody! Thank you guys very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.